The Moon is the Earth's closest neighbor in space, and its only natural satellite. It likely formed when a huge Mars-sized object crashed into our planet billions of years ago. This catastrophe turned Earth into a scorching ball of molten rock, and it also pushed some material into its orbit, eventually creating the Moon. Now this heavily cratered sphere revolves around our planet, causing the high and low tides we enjoy around the globe. A bit more than one-fourth the size of Earth, it is the fifth largest natural satellite in the solar system. The Moon has several phases, for example, new, full, or crescent moon, first and last quarter. But whatever the satellite looks like, you can always find it in the night sky, and sometimes even during the day. But now, imagine waking up at night, looking up into the night sky, and noticing that the moon looks a little different than usual. Looks brighter and bigger. The difference is so slight, you assume you're just seeing things because you're half asleep. You go back to bed, blissfully unaware that instead of the moon, you've just seen Mercury. At first glance, this planet, the nearest to the sun, is similar to our natural satellite. Its surface is also littered with craters left by space rocks. But Mercury is around two-fifths the size of our planet, so it's a bit larger than the moon. This would mean a greater impact on our planet. Nights would become brighter, high tides would become higher, and low tides, you guessed it, lower. The lunar cycle, that's the time the moon, or rather Mercury now, needs to go through all the phases, would become 14 hours shorter. But all in all, such a replacement would not have any drastic consequences for our planet. All right then, how about Venus? What if we instead swap in the third brightest natural object after the sun and the moon? Venus is often called Earth's sister planet because their mass and size are nearly the same. And that would make a difference. Venus would be as large in our sky as Earth once appeared to the Apollo astronauts when they looked at it from the moon's surface. The morning star, as it's often called, would be much brighter than the moon. For one thing, it generally reflects six times more sunlight, but it would also occupy at least 16 times more space in the sky. That's why nights on Earth would be way brighter, as bright as early twilight now. If you looked at Venus from this distance, you'd even be able to make out the vague swirling patterns on the planet's yellowish-white cloud cover. But Venus wouldn't really become Earth's satellite. The two planets would likely orbit around their common center of mass, and this orbit would be quite eccentric. Like me! But if Venus moved in the same speed as the Moon does now, the two planets would eventually crash into each other. Uh-oh. Okay, let's pull another switcheroo. If Mars was up there in the sky instead of the Moon, it would also be hard to ignore. The planet's disk would emit a reddish hue, and it would be almost twice the Moon's size. Even without a telescope, you'd be able to marvel at its unusual color and the dark spots on its surface. And even if you didn't see the red planet, you would still feel its unusual effects on ours. Mars is half the Earth's size, but several times larger than the Moon. Replacing a smaller space body with a much larger one would increase the gravitational stress, upsetting the delicate balance on our planet. If you were unlucky enough to be at the seaside when Mars took the Moon's place, you'd have to evacuate as soon as possible. Massive waves would rise in the oceans under Martian influence. They would crash against the shoreline like the largest tsunamis. Mars would also reflect more sunlight than the Moon, thus illuminating the night sky. However, this time with an eerie red tint. And you'd be able to admire the tallest mountain in the solar system, Olympus Mons, through a telescope. Mars isn't large enough to change the Earth's orbit dramatically. But with time, the two planets would probably begin to orbit each other, creating a binary planet system. And since Mars would be literally next door, voyages to it would become a whole lot more feasible. Pack your bags, kids. Okay, now for the big one. If Jupiter replaced the moon, Earth would immediately lose its status as an independent planet. It would instantly turn into yet another moon of the largest planet in the solar system. But hey, at least people would have a beautiful sky view, right? Jupiter is dozens of times larger than the moon. A gigantic, beautifully striped, swirly sphere would cover nearly all of the horizon. If you had time to enjoy the show, you'd see yellow, brown, red, and white clouds floating in Jupiter's atmosphere. Sadly, you wouldn't have much time to enjoy the view, 
as the gas giant's gravitational pull would instantly cause severe earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. Earth's mantle and crust would be drawn towards Jupiter, which would break the planet apart. It would be stretched and compressed with such force that its surface would bulge back and forth by more than 300 feet. On top of that, Earth's speed is only 10% of what is needed for us to stay in Jupiter's orbit. That's why our sluggish planet would crash into the gas giant in less than a day. Now, the rest of the planets on the list are smaller than Jupiter, but they're still ridiculously huge. So from here on out, expect to see similar results. But if Saturn was to replace the moon, it would truly be the most beautiful skyline to behold. I'm a little biased because Saturn is my favorite planet. It's more than 35 times larger than the moon, so it would cover 18 degrees of the sky. And its rings would stretch even further from horizon to horizon. At the distance the moon currently is, Earth would be a bit further away from Saturn than its own moon, Dione. And again, since Saturn is way more powerful than our planet, Earth would once again turn into a satellite. And again, Earth's rotational speed wouldn't be enough to keep it up in orbit, so we'd most likely crash into it in a day or two as well. But before burning up in Saturn's atmosphere, we'd have to pass through its magnificent rings. They're made up of pieces of comets, asteroids, and fragments of moons that shattered millions of years ago. It wouldn't be an easy feat to get through all that space debris. Plus, our planet would have to avoid all of Saturn's moons, all 35 of them. Does anyone know how to fly this thing? But even if Earth did somehow stay up in orbit and turn into Saturn's 54th moon, the gas giant's gravitational pull would still lead to massive tectonic shifts all over the globe. They would be tearing the planet's crust apart until there's nothing left. Not good either. Next up, twins. Uranus and Neptune are both ice giants. They are the same size, larger than Earth, but still smaller than Saturn or Jupiter. They both have icy interiors, deep atmospheres, and a similar color, a very mystifying bluish green. So if either of these planets replaced the moon, the consequences would be the same. So let's flip a coin. Okay, let's say that Neptune is the one you'd see in the sky one day. Neptune is 14 times larger than the moon. The planet would look like a bright blue hot air balloon in the sky, not only at night, but during the day too. It would appear to be 15 times larger than the sun. If everything else remained the same, a solar eclipse would seem to continue for ages. Once the sun would vanish behind Neptune's edge, our planet would be plunged into complete darkness for no less than an hour and a half, as opposed to our measly seven minutes and 32 seconds with the moon. <laughs> Neptune has 17 times the mass of Earth, so its gravitational pull is much stronger. That's why our planet would instantly become, say it with me now, a satellite. It would orbit Neptune at about the same distance as its own largest moon, Triton, only slightly further away. This means there would be a great risk of Earth colliding with Triton, which probably wouldn't go too well. But let's assume we were lucky enough not to cross paths with Neptune's satellite. Even so, there would be more than enough problems on our hands. For example, tides in our planet would become 1,000 times more powerful than those caused by the moon. Neptune's gravitational force wouldn't pull Earth apart, but it would heat it up significantly. The seismic activity would increase, setting off earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. And probably bork up the internet too. But of course, the most dramatic scenario would happen should the moon get replaced by the sun. See for yourself. The distance between Earth and its natural satellite is about 240,000 miles. But there are between 28 and 43 million miles between the Sun and Mercury. Even though this distance is huge, Mercury is still a scorched, deserted land. It experiences enormous temperature differences, from minus 280 degrees at night to 800 degrees during the day. So I'm sure it's no surprise to learn that if the Sun would suddenly appear as close to the Earth as the Moon is now, it would instantly burn everything off the planet's surface. You wouldn't even have a millisecond to wow at the blazing ball of plasma engulfing the whole sky. I'm afraid sunblock's not gonna cut it this time. Typical solar flares are much longer than the Earth's diameter. Just one of them would be enough to melt the Earth's crust, burn its atmosphere, and wipe all forms of life off the face of the Earth. 
and then our blazing piece of molten rock would immediately be pulled in by the sun and vaporized on its surface. Fun! So, what do we learn from all this? More than anything, I think it highlights just how lucky we are to have the moon exactly as it is, exactly where it is. To try to replace it with anything else would only spell catastrophe for us here on Earth, sooner or later. Thanks, Moon. And thank you for watching. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.